going to follow up on my um, <coughs> video the other day about painting Dark Age miniatures. Um, I'm not sure how many parts I'll break it down into, but my first uh, thought was to just quickly show you what they look like after they've had those washes applied. They don't look very appealing, they've kind of gone quite dark, but that that's what I want because um, I'm going to build it back up from there. They don't stay like that, apart from certain things like the wood. Um, I have gone back and touched up the metal started to on the helmet um, only because I had some spare on my palette because I was putting some on some uh, figures over the back there's some orcs and um, one of the new war games Atlantic Irish guys over the back here did his helmet and stuff like that and um, I've got a bunch of their other miniatures over the back here as well but I'm actually I'll, I'll I've put them together and plus I've done um, a couple of conversions using some bodies from um, the War Games Atlantic Persian set which had sort of generic enough clothing that they could have parts from the um, Irish set put on them. Um, so that's given me a few extra, you know, a couple of extra options. Um, as well, one of the orcs over here has uh, a body that's converted from one of the War Games Atlantic Persians and that's sort of just been sawed and Anyway, I'm going off topic. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I'm waiting on an order for a hundred more plastic 25 mil round bases because I've run out of the plastic ones. I've still got a few of the MDF ones, but I prefer to put these plastic figures on plastic bases if I could. Um, but they could be a while. Um, the postal system is in a not very good shape at the moment. Um, look like. It's going to be uh, uh, some things ordered from the main, from mainland Australia, maybe taking up to a month to get here. Um, so we shall see how that goes. So, in any case, figures with washers. Uh, they've had one the base colour of the metallic put on the helmet and back onto the shield bosses. Um, and the spear tips, I think. Yes. Um, so what I'm off to do next is to start work on the flesh, and I'll quickly show you these. Now, the problem, one of the problems we have with um, Reaper paints, and I'm not sure if they've fixed it, is that the labels tend to fade really fast. Um, they actually, you know, become virtually you know, illegible. Uh, so you have to kind of go back over with a marker and write on them. For me. I know what these are, so I haven't bothered to do it. Um, it's the bright skin, bright skin tone uh, triad by a Rivermaster Colors. Um, so what I will do is I I start with this one, the darker one, the shadow color. Um, that gets on all the skin, and and I I leave. In the deepest recesses, I leave um, the shading that's been achieved by that mixture of the um, red earth base um, tone and combined with the um, sort of sepia type wash, the secret weapon sewer water, which is basically like a sepia, um, which has a slight greenish tinge to it, which is actually good for skin tones. Greens and purples and stuff are good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'll start with this. After I've applied that, I will put my next highlight layer as this, the mid-tone, the bright skin triad, and then the final highlights will be with this one. And so, um, so this is all uh, basically an all over, just leaving the deepest recesses untouched. This one. We'll go the nose, the, um, the cheekbones, uh, the parts of the fingers and knuckles and stuff like that. Um, and this one is those same areas but smaller amounts, smaller amounts, smaller dots as it were um, on the highest parts of the cheekbones and the very um, whites of the knuckles, that kind of thing. 
Oh, look, here comes the sun. <laughs> She's got, giving you a real glare now, hasn't it? I apologise for that. As I've explained before, it, it's hard to film <laughs> in these conditions. But uh, anyway, um, I might be able to. There we go. It's down a bit. Um, when I've done those, uh, um, what I do next is I take, um, and this is all, I use a wet palette. So these are all applied to the wet palette, which keeps the paint workable for longer, um, allows me to more readily create sort of thinner washes and layers and stuff like that, keeps the paint wet for longer. So it's not drying out on a regular palette and I'm having to pour it out again. You know, I can just keep going, keep going. Um, now, I use um, Vallejo model color Cavalry Brown, um, depending which numbers you go by. It could be this 70.982 or it could be the 137, depends. Um, now, I use a very thin down, small amount of this, very washed down on my palette to put a, uh, a stroke of it on the bottom lip of each character and a thin uh, wash of it or glaze of it um, under the um, under the cheekbones there, just to accentuate that sort of shadow, but also that you know these guys have been uh, live most of their lives outdoors, and often end up with that kind of you know rosy cheek sort of look. It just for me, it just sort of sets it off a bit. And then after that, I'm not going to show you me painting that because it really won't work with the filming conditions I have in the setup. And no point watching me apply brush strokes to something you can barely see. Um, I'm just trying to describe the materials I'm using and the process. Okay. Now, and then once I've done that, I will get this. This is one of my all-time favourite paints, all-round useful paint. The label hasn't faded yet because this is a new bottle. Um, this is Reaper Brown Liner. It is a uh, very super dark brown, black brown. Excellent thing. It thins down really well and you can shade with it. You can use it straight and do really cool like lining in. You can, it's what I use for, see all these guys with black hair, that's the base colour, is this, this super dark brown. Um, great stuff, I can highly recommend it, brown liner. And there I do a bunch of other liners that um, are equally as good. They do uh, a sepia liner, a really ultra dark blue liner, a really dark grey one, and a really dark green one. Uh, very useful, very useful indeed. Um, so with this, and I, I, this is where I take to probably my smallest brush I use, which is a, a Rubloff size one, and I put a small stroke in each eye socket with this. And then what I do is I grab Reaper, I think that used to say, I believe it's called Creamy, creamy Ivory. It's basically, yeah, like an off-white, creamy, an ivory colour. I don't use pure white. Um, I can't remember the last time I ever used the pure white for anything, um, years ago probably. Um, I tend to use, you know, colours that are some sort of off-white, like ivory or like um, Vallejo Deck Tan is another good one. Um, creamy colours, also really pale flesh colours from whatever range you're using, they're also good for mixing with other colours to, to lighten them up. So then I, I, using a small amount of this, just thin down so it flows nicely from the brush, I get and make two very, sometimes, yeah, depends which way I want the figure to be looking, but sometimes I might just do two tiny dots, one for each eye um, in the corner um, to um, get the sense that they're looking in a particular direction. If they're, I want them looking straight ahead, then they'll be dot, 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 and with a small dark spot left in the middle. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of touching up just to get it so they don't look goggle-eyed or anything like that. 
in that case, if it's gone a bit over and it's lurking a bit goggle-eyed, go back with your, your sort of like mid-tone flesh colour, put a small stroke under the eye or above the eye to close the lids a bit so they don't look goggle-eyed because, um, you, to be honest, if you have trouble painting eyes and it always seem to end up with, with goggle eyes, at this scale, you, you're better off just shading it, the whole socket with a dark colour and just leaving it because subtle is better because um, the reality is if you're viewing a real person outdoors in outside conditions, you wouldn't really be able to see their eyes. You just see a hint of them. Um, if anything, it'd just be shaded. Um, so I prefer to do fairly subtle sort of eyes. Um, there are some fancy miniatures and things out there like that Reaper does and other manufacturers where the eyes are exaggerated, they're almost anime size eyes and you could probably go to town a bit more on big eyes like that. But for historical miniatures, they tend to have, they tend to have regular size eyes so try and avoid the goggle eyed look and uh, either go for just a shaded eye socket or a really subtle kind of uh, look where you make sure that the, the upper and lower lids are still <laughs> defined, that you haven't got an eye spread over the whole whole area <laughs> um, because what our our eyes when we look at miniatures we tend to naturally go um, like we do with people we go look at the faces and if you can do decent faces and bases as they say faces and bases and flags and things like that those sorts of things are really key um, obviously these guys haven't got flags but if you can do a really sharp job on the faces and a neat tidy job on the bases, it really helps to lift the figures overall. Um, okay, I'm going to cut it there and I'm going to get to work on those things. And then hopefully, if I remember and don't get too carried away, I will come back and um, show you my hair, the hair colour triad things I'm using or process based things. Okay, I'm going to cut the video there and do another bit later, hopefully stitch the parts together. All right, thank you. Back again, having done the um, flesh areas, the faces, the eyes, um, some other little things that I've done, uh, some of the guys who are, actually all the guys who appear to be clean shaven, I've given them um, like a five o'clock shadow and that's done using the brick of brown wire that I mentioned before. Very, very dilute. You can thin it down really well and just apply it like a thin glaze over the top. Um, and, um, or you could do something like mix it in with your flesh colour and apply it that way. It doesn't really matter. Have whatever way works best for you. I can't, you know, these things I can't sort of like tell you how to use your brush or what way. I, I can just sort of share way I've done it and the colours I've used. Um, we all have a different feel for painting and how the paint goes on and our preferred way of working. Um, even the sort of size brushes that we feel most comfortable using. Okay, so that's them. Um, it certainly makes them pop a lot more once they've had their skin done and you can see the, the real contrast between their faces and hands and stuff and the clothes but yeah but the clothing's going to come up too a bit brighter but we'll leave it'll leave plenty of nicely sort of shaded areas where they need to be um but the next thing i'm going to work on is um the hair um what i'll do is i'll go and grab a quick bit of lunch um and then i think i'll come back and record a short bit where i talk about some of the colours that I use for hair and the ideas behind that. Okay. Okay, back for a discussion about um, the colours I use for painting hair. Um, now I keep those sorts of colours along with regularly used things like flesh triad and leather colours and stuff, things that get used again and again and again, they tend to stay on my desk and don't go back in the paint rack. Um, now, let's have a look at blonde, blonde hair. Um, now, there are a number of different ways you could do blonde. The way I come to do blonde these days is I start with a founder, and this, you, you wouldn't know it 
to look at at the moment. But this guy's going to end up blonde. Um, I start with a uh, another faded label from Reaper. Um, this one is from their high density range. Um, if you look at the tone, it's just a sort of a light brown. So you could you could find something like that in Vallejo, no doubt. Because I believe that actually discontinuing the high density range, you still can find a lot of them, but they're turning over to their a Reaper Bones range of high density paints. Um, just slightly different. Uh, you still can find these if you have to look hard enough, but um, any Vallejo colour that's sort of like a lightish brown would work. It's your base colour. This is called Golden Brown, Reaper High Density Golden Brown. That's my base colour that I'm using for blonde hair. It gets the uh, sepia type wash over the top, top of it, and then I build up in successive layers. <coughs> And I'm using for this um, another Reaper Triad just because it is so convenient. I mean, um, in some cases I would do things differently, but generally for you know army type groups and things, um, I'll use these because they do they consistently look look good to my eye at least. Um, so going after the figures had that golden brown, it's had the wash put on it, so it's got plenty of darks. I build up back up. But this is called a blonde hair triad from Reaper. So you've got blonde shadow, blonde hair, blonde highlight. So it basically gets um, painted back over with the shadow, um, leaving only the darkest recesses. Um, and then the next highlight, blonde hair, um, using a top to head, the, the head, or places where the sunlight might hit it most. If you, you ha if uh, good tip, uh, Vince Venturella, who has a painting channel, gave the other day about painting hair. If you're uncertain, have a look at those uh, adverts you see for um, hair dyes and things like that. Um, but they tend to, in Photoshop and stuff, they tend to exaggerate the um, highlights on people's hair to show off the, the hair colour or, or whether it's a shampoo ad or something like that. And that'll give you an idea, the way they light those up, as to where you might want to put your um, highlights. But generally, our figures are outdoors, the light's coming from the top, there's going to be some sort of highlighting along the top if they've got longer wavier hair. You don't want to just cover the whole hair, you've got to think in terms of uh, when you look at longer hair, You've got patches of dark, patches of light, particularly if the hair is curving or if you've got something like um, these figures don't have it, but I regularly paint figures that have uh, like plaits, plaited hair at the back, um, that kind of thing. So you want, just like you would highlight other things, the bits that are going to get catch the light, they get the higher highlights and so on. So that's the blonde hair triad I use. Now with those that are base coated in that black brown, I've got a couple of options there. Actually, I think I've got, I've got three options. I can go, uh, say with this dude here, I can start with that dark base and I can build it up with a series of browns so that hey, he could have brown hair. Now you could use any sort of different browns for that. Um, I've got another, I think this triad might be a I think it's some sort of wood triad or something. Anyway, this is a Reaper one uh, where we got it goes uh, wood stained brown, shield brown up to driftwood brown. So you're just working through the tonal things, a bit like the foundry system, how they have the different colours. And you can make, there's actually some, if you search on the internet, there are, are some uh, fan made documents out there where people have created triads using Vallejo Modicolor as well. Um, a guy called Andy Saunders uh, used to have a site called Loki's Great Hall. It may still be on the internet, but he um, he developed a bunch of uh, triads using um, Vallejo colours, and he was a professional painter. And uh, you can probably still find the PDFs that he um, created for those. Very useful if you if you if you like to work with say just Vallejo, you can't get Foundry or you can't get Reaper. Um, so that's an option for brown. Other browns are available. <laughs> um, 
what I can also do, um, I could decide that this guy, well, probably not him, probably more likely might be an old bearded dude or something like that. Say this chap, I might decide that he's an he's an older fellow. He's probably, you know, uh, more mature in years. I could work this up with um, to give him some grey. So then I would take um, the uh, brown black and I would start to add some ivory into it and gr gradually lighten that up with highlights that way. Um, the other option is that you could actually go for someone who's got proper black hair and that way you don't want to be really adding white because um, to bring it up because you'll end up making with grey hair instead of black hair. You probably want to add in some other color, another colour for your highlight. You could try lightening it with a really pale flesh tone or maybe uh, like a, a bluish tone, a really light blue, like um, a bluish grey or something like that. Uh, because you don't want it to look grey grey you want it, and you don't want to over highlight someone who's got black, true black hair because then they will, it will look just like they've gone grey so there's a bit of a bit of a trick with that probably yeah adding a bit of blue um, that seems counterintuitive but try that something that so that with your highlights don't just look like they someone's gone grey um, try some different colours mixed in with your darkest colour to gradually lighten it. Okay, so you've got three different options you can build up from there and other ones as well depending on the browns you're using. Now the redhead, I use a redhead triad from Reaper. Um, you could probably do something similar with Vallejo. I imagine it's just a matter of picking the right colours. So this is actually their red hair triad. They do make one. Very useful it is, and I think it looks pretty effective. So they start with uh, auburn shadow, carrot top red, and then highlight orange. And um, again, the same sort of principles apply. Um, probably, I think, yeah, that guy's a redhead. He may be the only one in this line of eight figures. I may have one over the back, I'm not sure. I think depending on what which nationality you're trying to paint um, will you know make a difference as to how many you think might have darker hair uh, browns blacks whatever and how many might have fairer hair you might it, say for example if you're painting vikings you may expect to find more uh, fair hair maybe more red hair it just depends really uh, or just have a good, just have a mix of both, unless you are painting, say, a nationality where, you know, uh, fair hair, the sort of the gene for fair hair or red hair doesn't, is extremely rare occurrence. So some some of the um, southern Mediterranean peoples and things like that, then you'll probably predominantly want to go for darker hair. By and large. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go off, paint the hair on these dudes. And then I'll probably come back and show you how that looks. Oh, another thing someone asked me about, um, and I didn't make it clear in the video. The first one I did was the base colour for the wood before it gets that um, wash. Is this colour called Iroko, the unusual name Iroko from Scale Colour, Scale 75. And the code is SC27. Iroko, I, I, I can't paint. So that's that. Um, and there would be similar. There are similar colours. In uh, Vallejo, other ranges, and it's kind of a, it's a little bit like middle stone. Uh, it's actually probably lighter, sort of ticks in between somewhere. Um, but yeah, there are things that are similar enough in other ranges. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to cut this bit here and be back again later when I've done some more painting. Right, <coughs> down here, one of these guys. Uh, here's an example uh, of the red headed chap. I'm not sure how well that comes out. 
Kramer, Jackie Zanetsky. Um, so I've gone for like a grey head. Now what I do there, going to be grey, but not too grey. Uh, this guy, he's got a mop of brown hair. This chap, he's got fair hair. Okay. Um, he's had a couple of the others, like this chap here. And he's got fair hair as well. Okay. Now. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start to work on the clothes. Now, this is perhaps, I mean, sometimes I will, sometimes I work in a full triad of colours, like uh, there's a colour there called Jungle Moss from Reaper, and that has a full triad. I may work using the full triad, or I may actually just do a gradual process where I start with the darkest colour and highlight it up with ivory or um, deck tan that's another good one for highlighting it up or I might use one of the flesh colours so I'm going to lay out some deck tan and let me just show you, show you the, my palette such as it is, uh, it's a large Masterson's wet palette. I have shown this before on video, but I'll just, oh, sorry, apologize for all the wobbling. Um, now, the brush, I'll probably go, probably this one. Uh, what is this? It's not a helpful size. Size a quarter. I don't know what that is. It's bigger than a size eight, though. So it's 10. So, let's see the camera. There, there, there's some deck tan there. Um, I'll check out a bit more ivory. There's another option for highlighting colours. So a bit more ivory there. Also, you know, I could put out something like. Too far off the ivory. We could use some of this. This is the light, lightest uh, of the bright skin tones, so it's a bit, it's a bit sort of more orangey. Or you could go for mm, something. like um, an ivory from Vallejo or pale sand, uh, indeed deck tan, um, any of those and start to, say if I start with this dude here, and I'll start, I'll grab some more of his base colour which was jungle moss, and then I could use the full on jungle moss triad and I may do that as well, particularly there was one guy, I think I gave a dude, oh no, I was thinking I gave someone a cloak in that colour, no, some tunics in that colour for sure, um, so I'm going to lay out a bit more, so I've got some different options, so you can have different, I can have different ways of highlighting, I can highlight using the actual triad, because there are two more show, uh, sort of mid-tone and a highlight that come with that, or I can mix my own and then, um, that way they're not all the same they're slightly different and as in my light the colors i'm using to lighten with are slightly different as well so yeah so pretty big brush but it's all about brush control anyway i'm going to stop recording here because the camera is kind of in the way of where i'm going And it's not very exciting to watch, really. Uh, and 
it's hard to keep the miniature in the shot and all that sort of stuff but um, yeah so basically with dark edge stuff avoid highlighting I would I avoid I should preface that I avoid highlighting with straight up white um, just like I avoid using pure black I use colors that are close to it and I can mix them near, near enough to a black not to use straight up there. So I'm just putting the base colour back in using you know a pretty large brush. Could probably go larger, could go smaller. Um, the good thing, you notice I haven't had to dip back in for a while, so that's one of the bonuses about a larger brush. Load it up, if it's got a decent enough point for the type of work you're doing, or the stage you're at when you're painting, it'll keep going, it'll keep going, and going, and going, and you better keep painting, painting, without having to dip back in again. Isn't that, well, I think it's a better, I think it's a, an efficient, it's an if efficiency. Um, it's not a cheat, it's not a sh shortcut necessarily, but it's an efficiency, like for me at least the way I paint. Um, it has a different way. And that's fine, it's the same in other parts of crafts and arty things, art world and stuff. People have their own style, preferred ways of working. Mm -hmm. So I'm leaving shaded areas where you know you've had that wash go over the base colour and then leaving some of that in there, in the shaded areas and they'll get um, the whole figure gets a, um, a coating of um, AK Interactive Ultramatte varnish. So here I'm grabbing some of that um, that pale flesh colour. I'm going to mix some of that in with me. Gradually bring the tones up to a point that I'm happy with. You know, and you start on the bits where you think the sun's going to hit. They're standing, and the sun will be hitting the shoulders, that forearm. I always like to wear the elbow out a bit across the top of that. Let me see how this remains workable for longer because it's a bigger brush. It's got more loaded into it. You can keep going. You can make it wetter. So, like the fact that it's got a fair amount of water, that means that. It's kind of easier for blending as well. Yeah, and yeah, so big brush in conjunction with the wet palette. The wet palette helps the paint stay workable for longer too. Uh, that's just how I operate. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. Oh, and I'll carry on bringing the colours up on these dudes. Um, in my first video, I mentioned some of the leather colours, and that wasn't um, a comprehensive um, list by any means. Um, sometimes I'll use um, different yellowy tones, um, like khaki grey for leather. Um, also, if you can get it, uh, one of the better coloured box sets that Sky 75 do is a uh, wood and leather set, or leather and wood, I can't remember which comes first, um, that has some really useful colours in it. Um, sometimes they use them, they do, uh, I said, you can buy them as singles as well. There's a brown leather, that's a good one, and it has a nice highlight colour. 
there you can use orange leather um, one I use a lot and I haven't used one of these particular guys but is black leather which is actually looks kind of like a, a deep fish kind of purple brown colour um, and you can actually lighten that with um, something like a like one of these fleshy sort of colours for your highlights. Another trick you can do is for black leather, like get a colour like um, uh, let me see. Start with Vallejo black grey is your base colour for a black leather. Like I'll probably do some of that on the orcs over the over the back, give them more of that some black leather and that purpley one as well and just that darker grungy look. To lighten black le leather, use skin tones. Don't use white. Because again it will just make it go all grey. But by mixing skin tones you can to lighten up your black for the, for black leather. It gives a more realistic effect because um, basically that leather is skin. It's hide, animal hide, and it's going to get a more realistic result if you lighten it with a flesh, fleshy type colour to indicate where it's worn or even to help indicate sort of shiny parts. So that's another tip with regards to leather. Okay, I'm going to stop it here and I'm going to crack on with my big brush and see how much I can get done today before I'm knackered and need to go and have a shower. Um, and I um, might cut the video here and when we're next back we'll maybe have a look at some other things we can certainly we've got scope to discuss um, though there's not a lot of metal here for us to look at but we can certainly maybe do if anyone's interested I could do a chat about um, using shield decals because I'm pretty sure this job has shield decals with it um, but you know I do a lot with freehand as well but um, most people are familiar with decal, shield decals but I can show you how I do mine anyway just in case it helps people who are unfamiliar with it alright guys I think I'm going to sign off here and crack on with the painting and listening to some more of Henry Hyde on a podcast that I've been enjoying good thing about Henry is he does the nice long ones which are ideal for long painting sessions <laughs> All right, all the best, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, please feel free to leave any comments or uh, questions.